If they're not, then they're dead. Um, with exceptions, of course. The, no, the, the thing with exceptions, because I'm working on something I know is going to go past the deadline, and all I got to do is get the president to say, okay. Um, all, okay, there's, there's, there's 90 of us in the building, legislators, 60 in the House, 30 in the Senate. We all have a set of rules we have to live by as far as schedules and all of that, and that those rules apply to 88 of us. The two people who don't have to comply to any rules whatsoever are the Senate President and the Speaker of the House. And that makes some very good sense. So if there's something that comes up, they have the ability to do things with it. I don't make always good agree sense. with what they do. Yeah, but, exactly. okay. They can use that authority for blackmail. Well, I want to know if we can have all our food tested to the same specifications they're testing Medical marijuana. Yeah. Good one. Awesome. Yeah. Just another thing now. Eleven parts for film. Yeah. What? No, we can't. <laughs> because it's unnecessary. Why? Why? Uh, okay. Let, let me tell. Let me just give you something. Um, the. We've had the medical marijuana program in the state of Oregon since 1999, okay? There has been no testing, no anything, for almost 20 years. Um, I can list on one hand the bad outcomes we've had and still have five fingers left, okay? I mean, that, that's the reality of it. Um, what, we, what we are seeing with, you need to follow money on some of these things, okay? The people who are screaming that we need all this testing and we got this bad and that bad and all that stuff, they're trying to build an empire, okay? Um, we're proposing a different set of testing standards um, and, we're, and we, we want to bifurcate it, okay? Marijuana is a legal crop in the state of Oregon. That is not going to change, okay? It's an agricultural crop. Okay. Um, there are some crops that do require more testing than other crops, and we think that on, on the base level, the marijuana is, as far as an agricultural crop, fits kind of in the same category as tobacco, okay, because they're consumed in much the same way. FDA has pretty good standards for testing of the growing of tobacco. And we think that should be good enough. And so we know we have a clean product going in the system. We still need, uh, there's some things we need testing on when you're dealing with the finished product. You know, because sometimes, you know, sometimes when my hay is ready to bale and I go bale it, there'll be some wet spots in the field and I get some moldy bales, okay? I only had one, um, <laughs> and that's a lie. Um, <laughs> So, so the, the testing for, for that sort of thing needs to happen, but the main thing we need to test marijuana for is the potency. So that when, when a person goes into the store to buy something, they know, you know, they know the level of THC that's going to be in their product. Um, that, that's an important thing. Huh? No. See? So. Huh? They tell you, they tell you what, what proof your booze is, and so we should tell you what potency your marijuana is. Same thing. Hmm. You know, we're, we're trying to overcomplicate something that shouldn't be that complicated. Take a hit in front of it. One hit for the machine, you'll know. Well, you know, and of course the fact that it's Schedule 1 at the federal level adds more complication than we need, but we're thinking we can find a pathway around that too. So um, that's been an interesting committee to sit, sit on. So uh, <laughs> right. I still, I mean, it, it's it's one of the few committees in the legislature that has both House and Senate members on it. And it, we've been this is our third year, and I really tried at the beginning to get them to just call it the Joint Committee, but they wouldn't. <laughs> the Joint Committee. <laughs> I thought it was cute. It is, it is. What else we got? Senator Yes. Yeah. 
regarding testing yeah. and the current language and the OMMP modification, I've got a bunch of stuff that I don't really feel like I need to read here, but I would like to get to you. Sure, sure. About testing in particular. For one reason, is that you think everybody's smoking it, they're not. 50% of sales are now concentrates. I know. And when you concentrate it, you concentrate the poisons as well. I, I, did I mention that we needed to test at that level? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, what we're trying to avoid is um, we've been kind of running scared of the feds, which I think is somewhat spurious at this point in time. Yes. And <laughs> one of the things that we've had in the program in the recreational side is a thing called seed to sale tracking, yeah. which means you need to have all these data points all through the process. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, marijuana is an agricultural crop in the state of Oregon. Okay. Paul Norris raises blueberries out in Garden Valley. Yeah. He's got a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. State of Oregon is really interested in how many blueberries he raises. They don't give a damn how many blueberry plants he has. Okay. Okay. So that's the thing. We we have to do some tracking to satisfy the feds on some level, but I think finished product tracking will work, and there is a pathway to that. So, so so you know. But the thing is, you know, we do the seed to sale tracking thing. We've created a bureaucracy that will just grow and grow and grow and cost more money. Okay. The only way <coughs> I started this process. Um, on the medical program in 99. I've been involved in this from day one, from when the first measure was passed. Um, when we went in, when it became legal, I had two objectives. One was to, was to make sure we kept the integrity of the medical program, which I think we're gonna do. And the second goal was to eliminate the black market in the state of Oregon. We will never eliminate the black market. We can't touch it. The way we eliminate the black market in the state of Oregon is keep the price low enough so they're going to take their product somewhere else mm -hmm. and because we, they can't compete. They can get more money in New Jersey than they can here. So You're talking about inflow. Huh? You're talking about black market. Talking inflow. about the cartel. No, no, sorry. I'm talking understand. about all of the, the state of Oregon. The, cartels the state of Oregon grows probably Eight or nine times the amount of marijuana we'll ever consume in the state. Yeah. We know that. Okay. But, and if we put too many restrictions on the recreational side, the black markets are going to continue to thrive. Okay. We can't get rid of them because you go down into, into Josephine County, you go, you go west of Cave Junction, and, and um, that's cartel country. You know, in Southern Oregon, the cartels have, have law enforcement outmanned and outgunned, period. You know, uh, we, we can't afford that war. Um, and we can't stop it, it's been going on for decades, okay? So all we wanna do is, is try to eliminate the criminal side of the marijuana business in the state of Oregon. That's it. So uh, anybody that hasn't asked a question yet, Avo? Yes, sir. Yeah, what's your take on this Elliott Forest? <laughs> I, mean, I want the sale to go through for a lot of different reasons. Um, I'm, I'm very much disappointed in the, the treasurer seeming like he's going to reverse his decision to vote in favor of the sale. What did the legislature do? Not really. Nothing. Well, what's interesting is the legislature, there's a bill in the legislature to try to support the governor's plan. Because the governor doesn't want the sale, she wants uh, she wants this. Okay, somehow she wants to sell bonds. One hundred million dollars worth of bonds. Yeah, um, on the Elliott State Forest. So to a degree, her plan is okay. I own this podium right here, right? I'm going to sell bonds on this podium, even though it's already mine. Okay, that's her plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Jeff, what, what you need to understand, this is Kate Brown, good friend of mine. She's running for re-election in a year and a half. Okay. And so she is going to play to the environmental wackos and the labor unions. And, uh, so you know what's, 
this gentleman here has a question. How will the bonds be repaid if you don't harvest any timber off the Elliot? Oh, that's, don't worry about that. That's not in the future. Oh, <laughs> that's kicking the can down the road. Yeah. Well, you know, the, next the, generation. The, the, the real issue with that is the legitimate, the legitimate debt we need to incur as a state, the, the legitimate bonds we need to do, um, continue to run us relatively close to our limit which jeopardizes our bond rating. And if we go from an A plus to an A, it costs us billions. Mm -hmm. So we need to be really careful about that. Yes, sir. I have a health care care question for you. I'm self-employed, 61 years old. If what, the Republican Party's coming at it again with another plan. What's going to happen to the state of Oregon when my insurance goes from $130 under ACA up to $1,400? What's is the state of Oregon going to do something about that, or is no. that all? It Where did you get that number from? The premium. Well, I got it off from the Senate representative over in Southern on the other day. Oh, Krasansky? No, you oh, mean Mark Merkley? Oh, Merkley? You're talking about Merkley? Merkley. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's blowing smoke. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're on Medicaid? Okay. 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 Are you on Medicaid? No. 61. I'm 61. I'm self-employed. Okay. So, so who's your insurance I, I know I already looked. Uh, Pacific Source is $980 a month for the same policy I'm getting under ACA, which is $6,000 deductible, $7,000 out of pocket. You're getting insurance through ACA. It's got, is it private insurance? No, it's through the exchange. He subsidized. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you're, yeah, I'm paying for your insurance. You're talking about it. You're I'm paying, paying for your insurance. I'm paying your wages. I am paying for I've been my own insurance my whole life. Okay, if it's a federally subsidized program. Right, because we, we all pay for it. Yeah, it's not free. So you're, so no, you're no, 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 sir. You're, you're, yeah, everyone we're trying to so ask your question, folks. <laughs> your question is, if the federal law changes and the subsidy goes away from the federal side, essentially, what's the state going to do? Does the state of Oregon have single payer in plan? I hope not. Oh, I mean, I'm just being honest. I mean. I'm not sure what we can point to that we're doing a good job so, of doing government. So why would you want to give you all that to the government? You know, so if you don't have ACA, you got to go to the private market, and the private market has gone through the roof to pay for the ACA. That's right. I did. I paid the private market up until the Obama Act came in. Right. Exactly. Because the Obama Act is what made it unaffordable for you, and that's the ACA. Which you're not getting your insurance. Well, I'll get a four thousand dollar tax credit, and then my insurance jumps up eight hundred dollars a month. Okay, we used to pay thousands of dollars for yourself, and we do. Yeah, Now we think we're Medicaid. I think this gentleman here has a related question. He's got a question. Okay. It's it's back even with private insurance for ever. Okay. Now under the ACA, the individual. Our age, right. they can privately in the private market they can increase the insurance by the by the by the because you're older right. to by whatever it's three times. Exactly. Under the potential Republican thing that just got you know knocked down is five times. So so that that number for people above 55 or so will skyrocket. Yeah. And then if the if the if the if the uh, uh, subsidy drops. Then what we would end up owing could very well go over a thousand dollars a month. That's that's where your numbers come from. You put it fourteen hundred or whatever. The point is, is that it would potentially 
skyrocket because, because of a number of things going on at the same time. And that was that was if the that the plan that got knocked down last week had gone through. We don't know what's going on. Folks, I'm a registered Republican. I, I was not impressed by the process at the, at the federal level. Yeah. I mean, this is a monstrous right. problem. It's right. the biggest problem we're dealing with on a nationwide scale. And so to try to rush something through in 60 days essentially seems right. stupid at best. Okay. So, I've got um, one last question. This, 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 with my children here watching this political process, I'm really ashamed of your disrespect for some people in the world. And regardless of whether or not my children are in this room or not, this is not what I want to see from my state senators. <laughs> Have a question. Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. Wow. Yeah. Classic. Okay. No, this, 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 <laughs> hey, everybody, we have more questions from folks that haven't had a chance. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about, about health insurance. And I'm wondering if anybody in any legislative position is looking at the amount of profit by the hospitals the high-paid administration in hospitals these days. I've worked in hospitals for, you know, started 40 years ago. Um, 10? Yeah. <laughs> and um, did billing. Mm -hmm. And so is anybody stopping to think and look at the profit built into insurance companies? You, you keep saying, follow the money, follow the money. The, the problem for me is that that's at the federal level, and I'm just I'm just not enough involved to have the data in front of me to even know. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of folks, whether it's um, medication, insurance, possibly some of the folks that are running some of the medical facilities. You know, they might be making quite a bit of money. Um, all I know is is that before um, before the Affordable Health Care Act, my wife and I were paying about I think it was two hundred and nineteen dollars a month for insurance that we were very happy with. And now the policy that is part of my benefits package is costing roughly $1,600 a month. And I'm less happy with it than I was with the 219. And so um, I don't know what the answers are. I really don't. That's why I was frustrated with, with the Senate, House Republicans, and the White House with this haste to ram something through in 60 days. I mean, you can't do that hardly with changing.